Say you have a reasonably healthy budget of $1,000 to build up a complete fixed gear. Is it better to buy an expensive frame with lower quality, cheaper components, or to go the opposite route and buy expensive, high quality components with a cheaper frame? How exactly should you be focusing your budget on your bike build to get the best bike for your money that you'll love to ride? I'll tell you right now, where you should spend is probably not where you think it is. Real quick, according to my YouTube stats, only a fraction of you guys watching this video are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, hit that red subscribe button so you can watch more fixed gear videos just like this one. It's 100% free and you can unsubscribe at any time. This video was sponsored by Wabi Cycles. To learn more about the best bike that I've ridden for the money and my daily driver of a bike, Feel free to stick around until the end of the video to learn more about them. To answer the question, should you be spending more on your frame set or more on your components for a bike build, we just need to divide up the budget and see where the best use of money is. So let's start off with the extreme. Say we have a thousand dollar budget, we could buy a one thousand dollar frame set and no components or a one thousand dollar component set and no frame set. All of these are useless unless you have a frame set to put the components on or parts to put the frame set on. Now let's go down the list. Say we buy a nine hundred dollar frame set and one hundred dollar components and vice versa. A nine hundred dollar frame set will still be really nice, be plenty bling, we'll have a nice geometry and ride quality, but you'll only really appreciate those characteristics of the frame set if you have nice components to put on it. If we're spending $100 for all the components on a bike, we're really scrounging at that point. We're asking friends for free parts, we're going to bike shops and asking if they're throwing out any components, and we're getting some really low quality stuff that's used secondhand, and overall the bike is not going to be very pleasurable to ride. It'll probably be crunchy and unreliable despite how nice the frame set is. And if we're spending $900 on components and only 100 bucks on a frame set, we're going to end up with a really heavy high tensile steel frame set. While we may have really nice components, the frame set is going to hold it back and overall make the bike feel heavy and sluggish to ride. Again, both equally not a good use of your money. But say we spend $800 on a frame set and $200 on components versus $800 on components and $200 on a frame set. This hits a tipping point because at $200 for a frame set, this gets us into chromoly territory. At the very least, a chromoly frame set, even if it is a basic one, will allow our nicer components to shine more and allow us to appreciate them more, since it's significantly lighter than high tensile steel. And at $800 for a frame set, we're now in the upper mid range. We still have plenty of options to get a pretty baller frame set, and we can get a frame set with a geometry that will tailor the ride quality to our particular riding style. But the frame set will still be held back by entry level components, most of which will have to be used, or we'll just have to flat out spec it with bottom tier components. At 700 bucks for a frame set, we are now firmly in the mid-range category. There's going to be less options for frame sets compared to the $800 price category, but increasing the budget from $200 to $300 for components is a huge improvement. At that point, we can start affording things like entry-level track wheels built with parts from reputable brands and also get sealed bearing hubs. On the flip side, $700 for components is still a very healthy budget. We can still get a mid-range wheel set, which Honestly, they ride just as nicely as things that are custom built. They're just not as bling. We can afford a smooth running drivetrain, something like an Andel crank set with a CNC cog and a KMC chain. And we'll still have money left over to buy a comfortable saddle, pedal setup, and handlebars. And at $300, the frame will be slightly nicer to look at and we start getting into the territory of entry-level track frame sets. We'll be able to find some aluminum frames, but the real value for the money here is with steel frames that are made out of double-butted chromoly, which is another step up from the basic chromoly, resulting in a lighter weight for the frame set and a livelier ride quality. At $600 for the frame sets and $400 for the components and vice versa, it starts to get really interesting. We still have some good options for some nice mid-range frame sets. More of them will be higher quality steel though, like Tongay Prestige or Reynolds 725. And more of the mid-range aluminum frames with carbon forks will be slightly out of our reach here. But at $400 for components, we'll still have to make some sacrifices, but we will be able to get the ride quality and reliability that we want. $400 of components gives us a lot of wiggle room to focus on specific areas of the bike, like the wheel set, the contact points, or the drivetrain to tailor to the rider's specific needs. And at this point, either the frame set or components will be holding each other back 
and both will be able to shine. On the flip side, $400 for the frame set doesn't quite get us into the mid-range, but we will have more options for double body chromoly and for aluminum frames with carbon forks. $600 for components, still a plenty healthy budget. We can get an entry-level track drivetrain that'll still be plenty stiff and smooth, and still have some money left over to keep the rider comfortable. Overall, spending a bit more on components usually nets a nicer bike than spending more on the frame set. Because with the components, we have a lot more flexibility to emphasize specific qualities of the build and tailor the bike to how we want it to ride. But splitting the budget straight down the middle, 500 for a frame set, 500 for components, is actually the best use of your money. $500 gets you into the mid-range territory for frame sets. You have a lot of options for double-butted chromoly frame sets, and you even start to see frame sets made out of wider alloys like Tongay Prestige or Reynolds 725, which are materials that a lot of higher-end bikes are made out of. In this price range, we also start to see more exotically shaped tubing for aluminum bikes, and we start to see full carbon forks and tapered head tubes for increased stiffness. And we also start to see a wider range of geometries that are best suited for different types of riding and useful things like bigger tire clearances. $500 for components is also a plenty good budget. We can get a solid entry-level track wheel set for around $200, and for around $60, we can wrap those wheels in some nice rubber to get a plusher, smoother rolling ride quality, all while making the bike less prone to flats. And again, we can stick with that entry-level track drivetrain for around $150, which, in my experience, rides just as nicely as stuff that costs two to three times as much. And even then, we'll still have enough money to take our pick of a comfortable pedal setup or saddle or cockpit. Frame set's primary job is in the name itself. It's a frame, it's supposed to hold everything together so that you have a functional bike. And its secondary purpose is to influence ride quality. The frame set is the lens of how you view the rest of your components since everything attaches to it, and it will influence how you view the rest of your bike. While I'd argue it's the most impactful and important single component on the bike, it's not more impactful than changing the entirety of the rest of the bike combined, making it an effective use of your money to spend as much, if not more, of your budget on your components compared to your frame set. Together, the components directly affect how you interact with your bike more than the frame set itself. Sure, a stiff aero aluminum frame set with a tapered head tube and full carbon fork and an aggressive geometry is impactful to the bike's ride quality, but is it more impactful than a saddle that is crushing your <coughs> men's hardware? Is it more impactful than finding a set of handlebars that allows you to get in a position that's both comfortable and fast? Is it more impactful than having a buttery smooth drivetrain that makes every pedal stroke a joy? Is it more impactful than having a set of tires that's smooth rolling and only gets flats once a year? Is it more impactful than all of those things combined? I ain't seeing it. What I'm trying to say is stop asking me about what frames that you should buy and start asking yourself what kind of bike do you want to ride? And ask yourself, how badly do you want a reasonably dangerous shirt from zacolardo.com slash merch? So what are the best uses of money when you're upgrading your bike or building a new bike? A lot of people will disagree with me on this because what I'm about to say is unglamorous and it is an unpopular opinion, but the best uses of money for your bike per dollar is not the sexy components that everybody likes to talk about on the forums and on social media. It's not the frame set, it's not the wheel set, it's not the drivetrain. It's actually anything that makes you more comfortable. Because it doesn't matter how baller or stiff and how fast your bike is, because if it's not comfortable, you're never going to ride it. Three most important areas to really nail on your bike to get right. Number three is the tires. The tires are the only part of your bike that are in contact with the road. Thus, they have a huge impact on your ride quality, your speed, and your comfort. Along with that, getting a nice set of tires will also mean you'll get less flats and you can spend less time fixing your bike and more time riding and having fun on your bike. Look to spend around $60 to $100 for two nice tires for your bike. Number two is the saddle. A poorly fitted saddle can transform even the nicest riding bike into a torture machine and cause you to never want to ride it. Usually a wider saddle is more comfortable for more people 
and people usually run into problems when saddles are too narrow for them and it puts too much pressure on the soft tender bits. I cannot tell you what saddle to buy because my butt is not your butt. I personally ride a hundred plus dollar Brooks Swift, but a lot of people are comfortable on their stock saddles. Some people are perfectly comfortable on something like a $30 charge spoon. The saddle is an extremely personal choice, but find one that your butt agrees with. The most important part of your bike you should really nail down is the fit. Assuming you have a frame set that's already your size, focus on getting a stem and handlebar combo that gives you the appropriate reach. Because if you have to reach too far to your handlebars, or if you have to scrunch up or bend too far forward to reach your bars, you're going to get really sore really quickly and it's just gonna make your bike not fun to ride. Spending about 40 to $60 is a good starting point for a stem and bar combo that is comfortable for you. Comfort makes or breaks bikes. Stiffness and springiness and aerodynamics and how fast your bike is and how smooth your drivetrain is all of this doesn't even matter because you can experience none of those things unless your bike is at the very least comfortable enough to ride. Speaking of being comfortable, this section of the video was sponsored by Wobby Cycles. And we did a whole video on cockpit setups and how to get comfortable and fast on your bike through that that you can watch by clicking the card above. But if you just want to learn more about Wobby right now, every one of Wobby's design choices are meticulously made to give the purest ride quality for the money. And Wobby executes those choices perfectly with their bikes handmade by master craftsmen in Taiwan and a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado that's eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike you'll love. Wobby's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my 58 centimeter Wobby Special, weighing in at a grand total of 17.5 pounds straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a stock bike with completely steel, lugged frame set and no carbon components. And that weight isn't just for quoting and impressing other cyclists though, it results in the best riding experience that I've ever had with a snappy and lively ride quality that only top tier steel can bring. That pure fun makes it easy for me to ride my Wobby Special as my only bike. If you're looking for a bike that puts an end to your search for the perfect bike, consider checking out Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description, as it really is the closest thing that I've ridden to a perfect bike. And fancy famous shouts to Stan Strong 108, Ryan Witz, Julian Corona, Eric Vano, Gia DeZero, and Crooks for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember, life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.